Hello, welcome back. Uh, today is lecture 51. Uh, we were talking about microwave engineering concepts and we introduced transmission line in the last lecture. So, today we are going to talk about waveguides, uh, modes of waveguides and also we will talk about uh, things like CPW and you know discontinuities in the transmission line etc. Okay. So, to the whiteboard here. So, uh, what you see here are actually uh, two of different kinds of there are a lot of types of waveguides, but here I am showing you just two types of waveguides. So, this is like a coaxial and this is like a, a, a it could be a hollow metallic conductor, it could be a solid conductor. Okay. So, to essentially understand the behavior of these waveguides Maxwell equation the electromagnetic equations are typically solved in details which we are not going to do in this uh, in this course but it just suffices to say that you can have different kinds of waveguides and many of this like uh, a coaxial tube or maybe a hollow metallic uh, you know conductor which carries this electromagnetic waves are not implemented on the wafer because you know you cannot fabricate them that easily so these are actually connectors from the outside that you are hooking up or connecting to the rf board you know like an sma connector okay. and you might need them for high power or millimeter wave uh, circuits you, you they're outside the wafer per se you do not usually implement you cannot implement a coaxial cable inside the substrate you know you connect a coaxial cable to the edge of the substrate you, you couple them okay in the substrate you bring other kinds of transmission lines uh, which will propagate where the, the electromagnetic wave will propagate okay now before that it is very important to understand that electromagnetic waves uh, can be of different uh, you know nature. For instance there is this pure TEM wave transverse electric magnetic electromagnetic. Essentially what happens is that your electric field and your magnetic field are oscillating perpendicular to each other and as they are propagating maybe along this is x and this is y for example and they are propagating along z. So there is no electric field or magnetic field along the direction of propagation because the direction of propagation is perpendicular to the electric and the magnetic field oscillation okay and this transmission electric transver, tra, you know transverse electromagnetic wave can occur only when you have at least two conductors okay essentially your oscillating electric field uh, kind of gives you the voltage and the oscillating magnetic field gives you the current okay so you need two conductors such that this oscillating fields reinforce each other Okay, this voltage and the currents that they create, they reinforce each other and they propagate along the z direction. So you need two conductors, and it's a pure TEM wave. You have an oscillating electric and magnetic field perpendicular to each other, and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. There is no component of this field, either of the field, in the direction of the propagation. You reinforce. You have these different fields reinforcing each other. Okay, the electric and the magnetic field reinforcing each other. That's why you do need two conductors, and they propagate. Okay. That is why if you have a if you have a closed conductor, if you have a single closed conductor like a you know a rectangular waveguide or a circular waveguide for instance, okay, it is a closed conductor, there is no two conductor, then it cannot carry a pure TEM wave because there are no two conductors. A single a single conductor which is which is closed okay, cannot carry a pure TEM uh, wave. Now plane waves uh, we can still consider as pure TEM because you can say there are two infinitely large plates that are separated by infinity you know you can just have that concept. But in a closed conductor you cannot have pure TEM wave. Okay. Now you can have something called a transverse electric wave and a transverse magnetic wave. Transverse magnetic waves have a finite electric field in the direction of propagation. In this direction z there is a finite electric field that is the transverse magnetic because the magnetic field is transverse purely and then the transverse electric field has a certain finite magnetic field in the direction of propagation. Okay, so, TE waves and TM waves and then TEM waves. Okay. So, here in these images you can see this uh, the dashed lines are essentially the magnetic fields that are looping around like that and the electric fields are these arrows for instance. Okay. Um, so, these are expressing this express pure TEM, TE, TM waves as respectively here. Okay. Now, if you have a rectangular or a circular waveguide and there are many many mathematical equations that are derived we are uh, avoiding them. But this is a rectangular waveguide and this is a circular waveguide okay, just a close uh, conductor. They can carry transverse electric transverse magnetic modes they cannot carry pure TEM modes fine. You can see some of these you know images of uh, circular or rectangular waveguides. Uh, you can make many things like an attenuator, attenuator basically attenuates or decreases the intensity of an RF signal you can say attenuator, couplers will couple uh, signals, isolators okay, they are all available in this kind of 
uh, waveguides, rectangular and circular waveguide. Uh, we do not implement them on the wafer, I told you. They are outside the semiconductor die or the wafer. Uh, if you have to implement a coupler or an attenuator or isolator in the semiconductor uh, wafer, then you have to use a circuit. Uh, you, can, you can build in a circuit to uh, using transmission line on the wafer. So, the transmission lines are typically planar, you know, like a strip line, micro strip, uh, coplanar waveguide, we will we'll show pictures of them. So, th those are planar because that is how we fabricate them in a clean room, okay. You cannot fabricate a circular or a coaxial waveguide in a semiconductor wafer. Um, so, that is why uh, these are just to understand that there are different kinds of waveguides and they are useful when you handle high power, when you connect the, the wafer or the board to the external measurement tools, etc. You need often need some kind of waveguides like that, okay. Now, often times in either light uh, photonics or in electromagnetic wave RF signals, you hear this term called mode. And you can see in this image that I am showing you, there are different modes that are here. Actually, what does mode physically mean? It is nothing, it is the solution of Maxwell's electromagnetic equation. Modes are the different solution to Maxwell's equation, that is all. Because you have different boundary conditions, you can have different combinations of, uh, you know, higher order, lower order modes that can satisfy those boundary condition, okay. So, when you solve this electric field in x and y direction and you get this magnetic field in x and y direction, they are oscillating, correct. You have this a cos term, a sine term and you have this m and n. So, this m and n are the orders of the modes, you know, you can say. So, you can have, so for instance, l equal to 0, m equal to 1 l equal to 1, m equal to 1, l equal to 2, m equal to 1. So, there are different combination of permutation and combination of m and n, this the the the, the free factor of or you can say the in the cos and sin you have this number m and n. No? So, you, you can have different combination of m and n and you can see the different colorful shades are coming up here. These are actually different modes. They are, they are modes, so the in space especially, you know, they are basically the waves are propagating in this pattern. So, this is a single mode. Okay, this is a two mode device. So, you know, this is a not device, it is a waveguide for instance. So, modes are the solution of Maxwell's equation and they are the different, uh, you can say they are different physical patterns within the waveguide in which the wave is propagating and they typically do not interfere with each other, they are orthogonal, you know, they do not interfere with each other, but they are different solutions to the Maxwell equation. So, they can propagate, okay, uh, they can propagate in the waveguide, just keep that in mind. Uh, we do not have to go through all of this, but I will tell you the basic. Uh, the, the gist or the summary of this which is that for each combination of m and n which are you know the cos and sin terms, you have certain cutoff frequency. This cutoff frequency is not like the low pass filter that we talk, this is like a high pass filter, okay. Which means if the cutoff frequency is something like say fc, this is the cutoff frequency, then your waves will propagate, only those modes will propagate whose frequency is larger than the cutoff frequency, okay only those waves whose mo or the, those modes I would say, the modes whose frequencies are more than the cutoff frequency will propagate, the rest will not propagate. So, it is like a high pass filter, okay. Now, you can have different of course, a combination of m and n and different cutoff frequencies, but the mode with the lowest cutoff frequency is the dominant mode, okay. So, essentially you can think of this like you know, so uh, this is frequency for instance, okay, the transmission on the y axis. So, you can have different like cutoff, this is a high pass filter, something like that. So, the lowest cutoff frequency, the, the mode with the lowest cutoff frequency, this is the lowest cutoff frequency is the dominant mode. For instance, in a rectangular waveguide, we call it T e 1 0, which means m equal to 1 and n equal to 0. In this equation, this equations here, m equal to 1, n equal to 0, this is 1 0. The transverse electric wave, this is not a pure T e m wave because it is a rectangular waveguide. So, T e 1 0, that mode is the dominant T e mode. Okay, for a rectangular, it is also the dominant overall dominant mode, which means the, the, the more dominant mode of the T, the T m dominant mode, whatever it is 1 0 or something is not as dominant as T e 1 0. What it means is that this particular mode has the lowest cutoff frequency than the first mode of T m, T m mode, okay. So, the lowest cutoff frequency will set the dominant mode, okay. And there is a cutoff frequency above which only the wave si si signals will propagate. So, if you have suppose 6 gigahertz as the cutoff frequency of the dominant mode, then from up to 6 gigahertz, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 6 gigahertz, your, your wave cannot propagate. So, that is that basically is very critical because it sets, uh, it sets a limit to the frequency range over which you can operate, okay. And if you have 
frequency is less than 6, gig, 6 gigahertz in this case we call them evanescent waves like you have an imaginary beta okay they have you have an imaginary beta they do not propagate. Now coaxial cables that was of a rectangular waveguide is one thing but a coaxial cable has a signal carrying uh, conductor in between and surrounded by metallic uh, uh, outer layer for instance and in between you may have dielectric or you may have air you know this coaxial cable or line can support both TE and TM modes and we need to be aware of the cutoff frequency of the lowest order waveguide mode here what is the cutoff frequency because you will not be able to transmit signal or carry signal uh, below that cutoff frequency okay. You also do not want multiple modes with different propagating constant beta with multiple modes with different propagating constants you do not want them to propagate at the same time because it might create some undesirable effects okay. So then if you want to avoid these multiple modes or higher order modes from propagating then you also have an upper limit to the frequency. So suppose you have the lowest frequency is 6 gigahertz so it means below 6 gigahertz you cannot transmit fine that is good but you have higher modes coming in at say 10, 15, 20 gigahertz etc. You do not want multiple modes to transmit you know in the wave then you put an upper limit say maybe 20 gigahertz is where I beyond that I will have multiple modes coming in and I do not want that. So then there is an upper limit of say 20 gigahertz in this particular situation. So your frequency of the cable is limited from 6 to 20 gigahertz and this will also put a limit on the power handling capability. Now these are different connectors that are coaxial in nature you can see these are coaxial connectors in nature it is like a waveguide okay and basically you have a range of frequency over which you are going to transmit you can use the cable is useful you can say or the connector is useful okay. Now we come to waveguides or transmission lines rather which are of interest to device and circuits people on wafer because your semiconductor transistors and diodes are on the wafer. So what kind of waveguides can you do? Two very interesting and common uh, waveguides are strip line and microstrip. A microstrip is a metallic line on top of a semiconductor substrate and the substrate here has to be dielectric as low leaky as possible as less lossy as possible you cannot have a leaky dielectric or a endope semiconductor for instance this cannot be a highly endope semiconductor because then it is a metallic short in a way between the top and the bottom. There is a bottom ground plane here you see that this is your ground plane and this is your signal carrying top line okay. You cannot have this substrate as your conducting semiconductor it has to be a fairly resistive or low loss highly resistive dielectric which is a semiconductor which is undoped you can say or a semiconductor where you have carbon doped or iron doped like a gallium nitride which is highly resistive okay. So that kind of a substrate has to be there. So the line is here and the substrate is here and then there is a ground plane below. So you can see this a, these are electric field lines can you see that electric field lines coming up and this circular ones are the magnetic field lines. What do you see? You see that part of the electromagnetic both electric and magnetic fields are inside the dielectric the semiconductor and part of them are in the air above. So whatever is in the air above is actually like it is radiating out the signal you do not want that radiation as much but you cannot help it it, it just radiates out some of them okay. Uh, again then there is a strip line in strip line you have it fully inside the semiconductor substrate. Now this need not always be semiconductor substrate this could be a dielectric it could be for instance this or this could be say SI silicon nitride or maybe SiO2 such kind of dielectrics are routinely used in semiconductor fabrication okay whether silicon based or compound semiconductor based you always routinely use such dielectrics for passivation for interlayer dial intermetal dielectric in isolation and so on. So you can use such silicon dioxide or silicon nitride for instance in which you are either depositing the metal line or you are putting the metal line in between uh, this is strip line this is the bottom is micro strip or you can also put it on the gallium arsenide substrate or gallium nitride substrate it depends on the design of the particular circuit particular transmission line okay. In case of strip line the entire electromagnetic waves are confined within the dielectric within the semiconductor within the dielectric that you are using so that is different from the micro strip line. However fabrication of this becomes a little bit more complicated because you have a line and then you have to deposit them uh, on top of that and things like that but this is a little bit simpler because you just deposit the metal and that is it you do not worry about it right. Uh, in many cases you have to ensure that they are the, the, the ground is a proper ground the global ground and so you need something called via holes and we have talked extensively on via holes in our compound semiconductor and gallium nitride uh, transistor discussion we have talked about via holes. So these are via holes you can see the in a strip line for instance you have a ground plane on the top the top is also a ground plane 
the bottom is also a ground plane. So, the top and the bottom has to be connected back to back you know with a via hole to make sure that the top and the ground are the same ground. They are the same ground you reduce the ground inductance also and you make sure that, that they are the same ground and the strip line goes in between. So, this is an image of such a strip line based uh, you can see the top lines could be micro strip for instance and there could be strip lines in between also ok. So, these are uh, transmission lines that are realized or achieved in an actual semiconductor uh, fabrication process in a semiconductor wafer on which you basically propagate the RF signal in or out ok. Coplanar waveguide or CPW that we discussed you know at the, the start of the first like the last lecture is a very very important uh, transmission line specially for enabling on wafer RF device measurement or characterization as a GSG ok. This is a very very commonly used uh, uh, transmission line pattern where you have a signal line in between uh, it could be you know few tens of micron you know the dimension can depend, depend of course. They are separated by a small gap S they are separated by a small gap this is the gap S to another ground plane or a ground uh, you can say this is ground metallic pad this is another ground metallic pad and there is a separation S here ok there is a separation S here between the signal and the ground ok. So, you can see the simulation of this is the line here the, these are magnetic field lines the circular ones and these are electric field lines you know these are electric field lines that are going up here ok. Oh, actually sorry here the dashed yeah the dashed line is the magnetic field line you can see this is a magnetic field line the solid ones are electric field. So, this is electric field this is electric field these are all electric field, but these are magnetic fields here then there is a magnetic field these are magnetic fields. So, again part of this is in the air here and part of this is in the semiconductor substrate here ok. So, you have a center strip which is this which is separated by a small narrow gap on both side by two ground signal uh, you know it is not ground signal ground pad ok two ground pad on the other side. Now, the spacing that you keep between the two side and the thickness of the substrate that you have which is H here the pad dimension they are all very important by the way the dielectric constant of the substrate is also very critical in deci deciding this line widths and spacings because they will determine your impedance. Now, you typically use this as a um, uh, the, 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 the coplanar waveguide enables you to do on wafer measurement, but in a real MMIC for instance you may not use a coplanar waveguide as much you may use a micro strip or a strip line more often then a coplanar waveguide. A coplanar waveguide is used mostly for on wafer enabling on wafer measurement ok. The attenuation of the line the characteristic impedance how much you are seeing the impedance of the line etcetera everything depends on the dimension the spacing and so on and so forth. So, as you see this small as the gap between the two line is usually very small this gap is usually small and it supports this you know this maybe I can remove the annotation here again this uh, you can see this small gap which is this gap ok this is the gap here this gap can you see this this gap this gap supports the electric fields primarily concentrated in the dielectric ok. And there is some fringing on the air above, but that is the radiative part and we want that in a proper design can help minimize that part that is radiated outside ok. For instance, if you want to minimize the radiated part you want that most of this signal should propagate inside the semiconductor substrate then the thickness of the dielectric or the semiconductor substrate should be about 2 times the gap here. So, if the gap is for instance 50 micron 50 micron the this could be around 100 micron substrate thickness ok. This is just the rule of thumb this apparently this design will help you minimize the radiative part in the air you want you will have most of the electromagnetic waves coupling to the substrate below ok. So, again if you are going to design an MMIC or an actual circuit using coplanar waveguide CPW then you have to do careful design using ADS and HFSS other softwares are there to do the electromagnetic simulation only then you can find out the impedance of this CPW line. That impedance is very important in designing the MMIC or the RF circuit. However, if you are just using them as a method or a means to enable on wafer measurement then we do not do elaborate design we just take a rule of thumb kitty ok this S spacing should be you know half of the thickness of the substrate for instance etcetera. So, then the design is not very stringent you just enable an on wafer measurement in terms of the GSG because the RF probe tips that you use in your RF probe station on way to measure on wafer devices has 3 pins you know that has 3 pins and then this is connected to a cable and it goes. So, this is G S G ground signal ground this probe tips will come down and make a contact to these different pads that is why we have this on wafer CPW pads ok. CPW pad has a 0 cut off frequency what does it mean it means anything any frequency above 0 it means all frequencies can 
all frequencies can go along CPW unlike a coaxial or a circular or hollow rectangular cable etc you do not have a cutoff frequency everything can go here it is a not a pure TEM mode it is a quasi TEM mode you know because it is it is some part of it is in the air some part of it is in the substrate and it is a it is not a pure TEM mode and with higher and higher frequencies it becomes less TEM and more like a transverse electric mode okay. This all becomes apparent from the simulation of the electromagnetic simulation of the wave propagation in these structures okay. So, that is about CPW. Now, when you actually fabricate this transmission line on a semiconductor substrate, you can have many features in the line. For instance, you may have a transmission line that has a band like this, you know, there may be a transistor here, there may be a diode here and you have a band like that. So, that, that band in the transmission line is a discontinuity. There can be a T junction, can you see that there is a T junction, there is a cross junction, there is a change in the dimension of the line, it is called a step width change, there is a gap, it is coupling does open and there is openance on both sides there could be tapered line could be tapered like that okay transmission line the metallic these are all metallic lines and by metal you can put nickel gold tie gold etc whatever you know metal is that it is a metallic line on the semiconductor substrate or the dielectric like silicon oxide silicon nitride etc. So, all these kind of features like a taper like an open step height or a cross or a T or a band these are called discontinuities in the transmission line. Whenever and, and you need to have this discontinuity because you otherwise cannot design an RF circuit without this discontinuities. You can use this, this discontinuities also to your advantage because you can uh, mimic or you can make the transmission line uh, exhibit certain desirable property using this, uh, this, this bands or this discontinuities. So, this whenever you have a discontinuity like your metal line has a band for instance, whenever you have a discontinuity you try to radiate out some of the energy away. Okay you are dissipating energy or radiating energy into free space and that may be loss that may be a loss ok. Uh, so, whenever you have this discontinuities like a band or step etc you need to be you need to take that into the design and typically people use for instance ADS I am not advertising a particular software, but ADS is a very commonly used advanced design system it is a very commonly used uh, software to design RF circuit maybe power amplifier, low noise amplifier etc. So, you have to design the micro strip line in the circuit using ADS where you have to take into account these bands that they have ok. Uh, things like cross talk coupling attenuation etc are also very critical in a in a micro circuit because you have so many of these lines that may criss cross on top of each other through a dielectric they may run very parallel you know one line might run parallel like this there may be another line that is running parallel and they might be coupling between these two lines for instance. Okay. If there is a coupling significant coupling between two lines then there can be cross talk and that can reduce the isolation between two lines and hence maybe up between two devices or two networks ok. So, these all things have to be taken into account when you actually design an RF circuit ok. Uh, but there are ways to mitigate some of this radiative loss into free space for instance instead of having a sharp band you can have a like a gentle band you know you have an angled band like that. So, apparently if you do a simulation you can see that if you make it as like a smooth band like that or a like a tapered you know like a gradual band like that then the radiative loss is lowered as opposed to a sharp band like this ok. In fact, if you have a circular something like that it is even better ok and apparently the best is this ok this kind of a structure is best. But again this is all depends on the simulation uh, and this sharp 90 degree band apparently does not work well above few gigahertz. So, if you go to millimeter of frequencies this is not good then you have to have a circular kind of a band or an angled band tapered band etc. Cetera, et cetera, okay. Now, if I look at uh, strip line and micro strip which are the two commonly used transmission lines on a semiconductor substrate uh, and these are coaxial waveguides and all what are the different modes that are propagating or what are the what is the bandwidth what is dispersion what is loss what is the power capacity how easy it is to fabricate. Uh, you know how, how does it integrate all of these are summarized in this table you can go through I am not going to go through one by one for instance in a micro strip you have a quasi TEM line in a strip line you have a pure TEM line pure TEM for instance ok. Uh, physical size micro strip can be very small strip line can be medium this coaxial might be would be very large compared to these lines in a semiconductor substrate ok. When I say ease of fabrication is medium it means standalone the coaxial cable is ok but you do not implement a coaxial cable inside a semiconductor substrate typically ok. Strip line micro strips are very easy because although strip line is little bit relatively difficult than micro strip, but still it is easier because you can fabricate them inside a semiconductor substrate ok. So, this table gives you the summary of these different kinds of uh, you know uh, properties of this four different kinds of transmission line or waveguides ok. The next we will start is a microwave network 
and maybe in this lecture I will just just start about what the description of microwave network is and then we will go to a subsequent treatment on different matrices. See transistor, transistor is a two port network then but there can be other components where you have more than two port okay that is one thing. Now RF signals are always incident wave reflected wave and there will be of course transmitted wave. So incident reflected wave. Now when you have these different ports and you have at say an input and then there is output in the context of transistor we'll, if you just talk about the transistor you have an input side and you have an output side okay and then the input signal comes in and the signal gets reflected some part of the signal gets uh, amplified or whatever the other side. Similarly on this side the signal will go away but there is also a signal that is coming in and then it is going away. So on this output port also you have an incident signal and an outgoing signal okay. Now in many of these cases we try to although this is a nonlinear device we try to linearize it around this point which means we want we, if you talk about small signal. Small signal means that you are linearizing the behavior around a certain point the small range of voltage or current the device can be assumed to behave linearly although the device is overall it is nonlinear but we are linearizing it okay. So how do you understand the mathematical relation between the input side and the output side if I talk about a linear network. Okay. It is a network and I am talking about a linearized uh, network where I am I will be using the linear uh, behavior uh, on, on both sides. Okay. But if you if you have a power amplifier for instance you need to go to large signal and non-linear uh, analysis will come into that but that is for a separate discussion here. Now if you have two ports and there can be multiple ports by the way you can have n number of ports on a particular microwave network but here I am talking about a transistor so there are two ports how do you relate the input to the output. Okay. So for that you have you represent this device as a matrix some matrix that will relate the input to the output or output to the input okay. And this port is basically a combination of a signal and a ground. So two terminal gives you one port a transistor is a two port device okay. But you just keep in mind the transistor is just a very I mean this transistor is what we discussed in this course mostly but there can be microwave components with more than two ports also okay. So please keep that in mind. And the concept of matrix is to mathematically understand and relate the input and output side of the device in this case the transistor. If there are more than two ports you can use the matrix to explain or express the understanding between port 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 etc. etc. Okay. Multiple ports are there you are correlating and understanding or expressing the relationship between multiple ports. But in a transistor there are only two ports. So in a transistor in the context of a transistor the matrix the matrices are essentially going to express or explain the relationship between the input and the output and for that we need different kinds of matrices why we will see that of course okay. There is Z matrix there is Y, y matrix there is ABCD there is S H uh, H is hybrid and then there is S typically these five types of uh, matrices are used uh, okay there could be more also to relate between the input and the output okay. As I told you there maybe I can remove the annotation uh, there are different types of matrices Z, Z is the impedance, Y is the admittance, ABCD is like a it is useful for cascading networks, S is the scattering which is very very important, H is hybrid parameter. So this matrix or the matrices will establish the relation between the input and the output. In all the ports you remember there is an incoming wave, there is an outgoing wave. Now if I have a port something like that okay this is a, it's a transistor. If I port something like that, I can say that there is a voltage across the two terminal which is V1 and there is a voltage between on the output which is V2. The current that is coming in is I1, the current that is coming in here is I2. Now I can relate input side to output side and I can say there is a Z matrix, there is a Y matrix, okay, ABCD matrix, etc. But although mathematically it is uh, it's, it's, it's convenient to understand and express all of this like that, but in reality when you measure uh, it may not be very easy when you have Z matrix or an Y matrix okay and in that case we have to take help from the scattering matrix okay. So we will come to that in the next lecture but for now I think we are good so this will we will we'll conclude today's lecture with this uh, the introduction of the microwave network. Uh, the idea is that there are different matrices uh, with which you try to understand the two port or multiple port behavior in this case course we are talking about two port transistor that is max okay. So these matrices have their own unique advantages disadvantages. S parameter is the most practical of the, the matrix that you use because measurement tools uh, will use S parameters 
uh, for certain reasons that we'll discuss in the next lecture. Okay, so thank you for your time. I'll see you in lecture uh, the next lecture tomorrow. Thank you.